First vote created for the BBC, chosen by Dave. People want to get their planes. They don't want to be evacuated. It's airport. It's a bank holiday weekend at London's Heathrow Airport. And for the Israeli airline El Al, it's the busiest day of the year. We're going to start checking in. We're going to be busy, very busy. I don't have any seat to change. We've got an overbooked flight. We're overbooked by 18. Yes. For check-in supervisors Sarah Collins and Peter Luck, an overbooked flight means the pressure is on. I don't have any seat to change. All right, let's go. Shalom. Today, it's the last chance to get to Israel in time to celebrate Passover, one of the biggest festivals in the Jewish calendar. No one can be left behind. We could have probably put uh, ten jumbos today and still fill them up because it's the last day before the Passover. Tomorrow is, an e tomorrow is the evening. Uh, tomorrow we don't have flights and everyone would want to be in Israel by then. It'll be a bit of a, a bit embarrassing to leave anybody today. Heathrow resident pressmen Russell Clisby and Steve Miller have had a hot tip. Flying in today is Hugh Hefner, the founder of Playboy. He's trying to promote the business in Britain. Russell and Steve know he's flying in from America, but have no idea what his plane looks like. Hugh oh, no, used to have the uh, a, a 727 jet with the old Playboy bunny on the back, all black aircraft, uh, very nice looking aircraft. But we think that's broken at the moment, so it might be coming another aircraft, a different type of aircraft. So um, we're just uh, so well, that won't be a giveaway. We won't see the sort of black jet with a bunny on it coming round. Yeah. So it could be anything. We, we hope we've got the wrong aircraft. We're not going to be greet some Arab coming down the stairs or something like that. He won't be best impressed. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it was in Yashmex. All, all the people in Yashmex. I'll play more of the month. <laughs> all the El Al passengers have bought tickets, but there are not enough seats for everyone on the plane. Nothing at all. In the window. <coughs> Sir, there is nothing to offer you. It's not possible. Yeah, but there must be something you can do. I know that there must be something you can do. Yes. Today's the day before, the last day for Passover. And, uh, the whole flight is families, babies and children. It's all it's very likely that we will have something. So do come back to us, yeah? Okay, we'll Check it. Nothing for the moment. You haven't got a seat for me. How long am I going to have to stand here? I'm not even arguing where you give me two seats. About 10, 10, 15 minutes. I've got to stand here for another 15 minutes. You don't stand here at all. You take a seat on the couch there, and we'll call you, and we'll come to bring the boarding pass. I just don't believe. I'm looking through seats. I'm looking. I've got nothing to do, nothing to give. Hello. I've played the musical chairs up to now, but there are no more chairs to play with. Okay. Bye. We're still waiting for a seat for you, madam. You're going to have to... I, I, I have to ask you to wait a little okay. bit. Okay. At Terminal 2, more than 10,000 passengers pass through immigration control every day. Forged passports are a constant problem. Immigration officer Eric Day is looking for any detail on a passport that appears out of the ordinary. Indian businessman Nasir Zahidani wants to enter Britain for a two-week work trip, but Eric is suspicious about his passport. Have you, uh, you applied to go to New Zealand, did you? Yeah, because my cousin, uh, uncle was there. When so was that in 97, then? I applied. I in 97? Yeah, it was 97, I think. Yeah, in December. 6th December, it was. 6th of December, 97. Sorry, sorry, October. 6th of October. Yeah. And you got refused a visa to go to New Zealand? Yeah. Why did you get refused? I don't know. Well, I'm I was pretty asked, sure I was, they I was asked a couple, couple of questions, I answered them. 
I know. Uh, and I, I was told, told come next to Let's go back a bit. Okay. I was told, wait, wait, just calm down. No I think if they, they refused you, they'd have asked you more than a couple of questions. No. What did they say? Yeah, visa is not guaranteed. And it was 1997? Yeah, it was it's 6 December 1997. December? Sorry, because I have got this in December, I have confusion. 6 yeah. October. Russell and Steve are off to the other side of the airfield to meet the Playboy boss and the Playboy entourage. We've got Brandy, Randy and Mandy, who are his three girlfriends. So, uh, I imagine they are uh, typical Texan girls, good old girls. Yep. Quite uh, well endowed. <laughs> and uh, when you think of it, what, they're... They've got the twins, was it Randy and... No, not, not Randy, sure Randy and Mandy. Or, uh, you've got the twins there who are 20 and the other girl's 24 and you've had all their ages together yeah, and they don't quite come to Hepner's age. Viagra for you. Viagra, yeah, I know. Uh, only joking, you. I'm sure you're fine, upstanding <laughs> fella. At the El Al check-in, some passengers can't believe that even with the ticket, they don't necessarily have a seat. Not asking. Pacific seat, mm. just to have two seats. Mm -hmm. Not the present well, time, though. No. No. I don't understand why you I, can't I give two seats. It. It's the wife who is sending you I mean, here. I'm in the middle, hang on, hang on. I'm in the middle, 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 hang on. I didn't ask about choice, did I? It will only solve it when I get two seats. I just want to make one or two inquiries, okay? Just take this. It means I haven't finished with you yet. I'm going to come back to you in a short while. No just take your seats over there, okay? No I'll come back to you as soon as I can. I've got all that here. Don't you worry about that. No problem. All right, then. He just refused a visa for New Zealand, and it says in the back of his passport. They put a stamp in there that says, it basically says NZ, New Delhi, 16, 6, 10, 97. He was a little bit confused over whether it was December or October. And I'm, I'm not too sure. It looks where it says 97. It looks like it's been overwritten. And where it says 97, I, I think it might have originally said 94 and it's been changed. So I just want to go and check up on that. What do you think will happen now? What will happen? I think. They were employees and everything. I'll be okay. Because I know. You can see quite clearly that the paper fibers have been damaged on the page and it looks to me like there's a diagonal line there that's been erased and a vertical line there that's been erased so it would have been a, a four across here with a, four, with a line there. Eric's doubts about Masia's passport are growing stronger. That's the 97 that we've got now and gradually as we go across the ultraviolet spectrum you can see where the four used to be. But I can't understand why someone would change the date of refusal of a visa from New Zealand to a date more recent. If anything, you change it to a date longer ago. It's a bit suspicious, to say the least. At the aircraft stand, Steve and Russell are checking their facts. And we've got playmate of the year, Heather Kozar, A-O-Z-A-R. He's 23. And Hugh's three girlfriends, Brandy, B-R-A-N-D-E, Brandy Roderick, right. and twins Sandy and Mandy. It's a lucky old you, eh? Lucky, lucky. Let's see if the new camera works. Yeah. But these will be my first Playboy photographs, actually. I've, I've photographed a few people, but never for Playboy. Similar poses, though. Oh, I didn't need that question. <laughs> Police officer Annabelle Davis knows more about airline passengers than most people. After 15 years as a stewardess, she's now pounding the beat in Terminal 3, on the lookout for anything suspicious. Are these your bags, sir? No. Do you want to come here a minute? Sorry, you can't leave these here. Why does somebody leave a bag unattended? Um, most of the time they've just forgotten it, it's completely innocent. But obviously there's, there's the terrorism angle you look at, and secondly, I mean, it might just get stolen if it's... Uh, Looks inviting to people. Two one five, two one five, two hundred. 
The owner of the suitcase seems to have completely disappeared. We have one person who actually saw the guy with the bag. Any idea what he looked like? Um, I've sent the guy to go and look for him um, round about, uh, yeah, five and a bit. Uh, small little <laughs> bag print. With no sign of the owner, fears are growing about what's inside. The suitcase here is dated, uh, the tags on it are dated the 27th of May. One of the ADI blokes actually has seen somebody put it down and wander off. Um, we're just having a look for him now. Uh, usually with bags which have got um, names on and everything else, I mean, we should be able to find the man. But it's outside American Airlines, and so um, with the political situation at the moment, uh, certain airlines are always more at risk than other airlines, so we just uh, look at it in a different way. At the El Al check-in, there are still more passengers than seats. Sarah's decided to ask the passengers to help her sort out the numbers. Ladies and gentlemen, have your attention, please. We're looking for volunteers to come off the flight due to overbooking. Volunteers will be entitled for compensation of 150 pounds each. For adults, 85 for a child under 12. And will be flying with us tonight on LY318 at 9 o'clock. Steve and Russell hope to give an exclusive welcome to Hugh Hefner and his Playmate of the Year. But word has leaked out. Yeah, I think there's a bit of interest in this Yeah, room. a few people here are not strictly uh, here for operational reasons, shall we say. Everyone wants a glimpse of 73-year-old Hefner's new girlfriends, and they've all found an excuse to lend a hand. It's to carry, it's to carry all of the aircraft. Sort of <laughs> that did make me worried when I saw an ambulance come by a few minutes ago. It's still not clear what's in the unattended suitcase. Right. Not Has anyone touched it? Well, well, no. No, no one's touched it. And it's no. and just well, the security guards are the only person who saw it here. Yeah. Heathrow's counter-terrorist unit have been called in while Annabelle tries to trace the owner. Yeah. Yeah. So, we've got who travelled on the 27th from Doha to London, yeah. and that's where you lost track of him from there, is it? Yeah. Well, he's, he's checked in that bag. With no sign of the owner and with new intelligence from the counter-terrorist unit, security has to go to full alert. Clear the areas, please. Make your way outside the terminal building. Clear this area. Make your way to the outside the terminal building. Make your way to the nearest exit, please. Can you clear this area, please? Make your way outside. Yeah, no, we'll do that. You lot get out. Okay. <laughs> we'll we'll do that. Five airlines, 700 passengers and airport staff are having to evacuate the check-in area. American Airlines staff, out you come as well. At passport control in Terminal 2, Eric wants some answers about the altered passport. I've just had a look at this stamp that, that says that you were refused yeah. on the 6th of October, 97. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And this, this date has been changed. It wasn't 1997 originally. It's 1997 now, but it's been changed. No, it's 1997. No, I can see it's 1997 now. I'll stay here. No, it's not a problem. Well, you're going to stay here for the rest of the weekend yes. until no, I can... It's not that. It's not it. Make sure that it's 101% well, sure it's 6th October, 1997. So I, why I is it any change then? Nobody has changed it. Well, somebody's changed it. I'm telling you somebody's changed Maybe it because I've looked was at it. In my, in my, it was with my brother also. Maybe he Pardon? must... It was with my brother also at home. Your brother? Maybe he's a small brother. Maybe he might have done something, but it's not. Your small brother might have changed this to no, 1997. No, I'm not saying he must have changed it. But this is 1907 only. Right. I, I guarantee that. 101%. In Terminal 1, LL's flight is still overbooked, 
There's no takers for Sarah's offer of easy money to those who wait for the next flight. It's not a hard job. Five hours difference in a flight Thanks. for 150 pounds. Have we got any? Nobody, but nobody's acknowledged me. Nobody responded. Let's do another one. Let's do another one. May I have your attention, please? We're still looking for volunteers to come off the flight due to overbooking. The Playboy jet has finally touched down at Heathrow. To Russell's delight, first off the plane is the perfect picture. Playboy boss Hugh Hefner with his Playmate of the Year. Next, it's the family photo. Hugh with his three new girlfriends. Just come down a little bit. Just come down. No, 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 stop there, stop there. We want, we want Mr. Hefner, we need you in the middle, sir. Just keep back, guys. Just, just keep me out of the cold a bit longer. All of you over here, please. Thank you. And just in the middle here, thanks. Back home in Texas, it's 40 degrees. On the tarmac, it's 12. Okay. Russell's got his pictures. Now Steve needs a quote. So you got three girlfriends travelling with you? That's true. How's that work? Very well. <laughs> <laughs> and the names are Sandy, Mandy, and Brandy. Yeah. It really keeps into the music. Is there a bit of jealousy there, though? No, no. Mm -hmm. It's a, you know, two more sisters, and, and uh, no. We get on very, very well. You? So you're just here for a couple of days, is it? Yes. We'll be here uh, for two days and go back on Thursday. Okay, My pleasure. Nice to be here. I'll tell you that. My favorite town. That yeah, was quite good. Uh, quite a funny little line there. And uh, when I said, "Well, how does it work with the three girlfriends?" He said, uh, "Very well, as, as he would do." But, uh, yeah, it's quite good stuff. Okay, you just wait there. Okay, I'll just go. Eric has the authority to search Nasir's bags. That's it, is he? For a two-week visit. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. He's certain that Nasir's passport has been altered, but has no proof that Nasir has done it. I have to take things out, okay? Eric's now looking for evidence to see if Nasir's telling the truth about his plans in the UK. Maybe we help you this way. Well, I'm afraid, sir, that it's up to me to do it. I know you want to help me, but the way to do it is for me to do it, okay? Oh, fantastic. Did you know that would happen then, did you? Okay. I'm keeping these for now. Everything? Yeah, all of these. There is a letter that's come out of the bags, which is from his brother in New York. And basically, it says, Dear NASA, I hope you are fine. The best thing to do is to get a return ticket for New Delhi to London with the cheapest airline who gives you the most discounts. Make your travel plans in May and fly to London. Stay there for six months, look for a job. You cannot plan everything ahead. Well, who knows, you might get lucky and get settled in England. From a, a point of view of whether he's acceptable into the country or not, he's practically with this letter just hung drawn and quartered himself, really. What can we say? But we've still got to confront him with it anyway. While the remaining passengers are evacuated from Terminal 3's check-in area, Annabelle still trying to trace the owner of the suitcase. A man has walked away from a suitcase and the baggage tag was Doha, London, Glasgow. And we're trying to find out if he's connected on today or anything about him. It was BD12 yesterday, he missed it. Okay, bear with me, my man. That suitcase, we're evacuating the terminal. Is there somebody who can do it? At El Al, the cash incentive is finally working for Peter. A family of six have realized they could make a lot of money by taking that later flight. So, I mean, for another six hours makes no difference as long as, we get there. as long as we get there by tomorrow morning. It'll be all right. It's a lot of money as well. Isn't it? Certainly a very big consideration. It would make your holiday. <laughs> it would, yeah. indeed. Well, whatever happens, happens. It's a tricky numbers game for Peter, juggling passengers for this and the later flight. We we'll put you down in case we need six people. But usually twos and threes is easier for us to play around. We can separate and put them on the flight. 
and at the end we'll let you know the situation. It's not as clear cut as you six. At the end of flight, you don't know what you're actually going to need. That's why we offer them money. The police have not been able to find any trace of the owner of the suitcase. With the help of airline and airport staff, they're now testing the suitcase to find out what's inside. What's happening at the moment is they're running a series of tests on the suitcase and hopefully they'll be able to determine whether there's any explosives inside. I need to ask you some more questions, all right? It's a proper please, interview please, now. Please, please, ask me. Eric now has to confront Nasir with the evidence he's discovered. I want you to explain why you've got this letter in yeah. your baggage yeah. that tells you, written yeah. in March, to come to the UK, yeah. stay here for six months and maybe yeah. even settle down yes, here, and you're now here in May. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a bit of a coincidence, I, 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 don't you? Don't you think it's a bit of a coincidence? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 Can you see it from I, my point I, I, of view? I, 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 Excuse I, me, let me finish. You are now here in May, and you're carrying in your baggage a letter from your brother that yeah. says go to the UK in May to find a job and maybe settle there. It's a bit too much of a coincidence from my point of view. Okay. You have finished now, no? Yeah. Okay, so let me clear it. He was first telling me to come to America because he's, uh, I told him that he's a different from us. He left at home uh, years back. And I had, you can see that letter. This was his intention. My intention is not that. My intentions are clear. Me finding this in your baggage That's true. is of no help to That's you. That's true. If I can, I can go through it now from your point of view, it's... It's very really The numbers are still not adding up at LL, and for Peter, it's time for the hard sell. We will give you £150 to go on a later flight tonight. Pardon? You had that offer. It's a good offer. For no, five hours? No, not as for a man as desperate as you. I would think we're talking about higher figures. Money, That's the, the bottom, bottom line. Adding the noughts to no, that no, one. The offer is not good enough. It's got to be more than 100. No. If you give us a reasonable price, we would delay until the 9th of July. It's not negotiable. As okay, a fine. Figure. You should have told me that. It's obvious it's not negotiable. Airlines don't negotiate prices. Even with the money on offer, Peter can't find any more takers. So we're offering you about 50 pounds to go on the flight tonight. Yeah, I know. Anyone over under 12 gets 85. How many more? You need four more. We need four more people. Good luck. Passengers without seats are growing increasingly impatient. I'm beginning to lose my temper. How is it looking now? As far as I'm concerned, it is looking excellent, because they allow are incompetent, but to the best of my ability, they're not liars. And they've sworn on their oath that we'll be on that plane. Do you feel confident then? If not, as a lawyer, they'd be a first thing in the morning. Right. Go back behind the barrier then. Police still don't know whether the suspect suitcase contains explosives. I need to go and speak to my chief immigration officer, no tell him everything that's happened, and I'm just going to have to make a decision from there as to what we're going to do now, OK? My point of view is that I don't like it, I can smell something funny, mm. but what we've got is he's either telling us the truth now or he's had an hour to sit there and think about how am I going to explain away this letter. And I would say that what would be decisive in finding out whether he's telling the truth or not now is whether or not this really was the date that this was refused. Because if that's false, then I wouldn't believe anything else he said about the letter. Okay. But if that is genuine, then I'd be inclined to think that he is maybe only coming for the visit. But on the face of it, we've got an alteration to the passport. Yeah. And. A letter that says, letter go to the UK in May and stay there. Shows he's coming for a reason other than a, as a yeah. visitor. Yeah. So I would suspect maybe um, detain him overnight, make the inquiry first thing in the morning, yeah. see what New Zealand say. Yeah. And, and if that's damning, it'll be a refusal. And if yeah. it's not, we'll let him in. The cash on offer from El Al has at last seduced another family to take the later flight to Israel. Peter, got the volunteers. Four, five minutes. 
Fantastic. Okay, so let's get the bags to the side, check them in. These four volunteers are just what Peter needs to balance his numbers. Now it's time to sort out the cash. And they're getting other perks too. Now I was promised taxi fares in Tel Aviv, Israel. That's right. How do I go um, about those? Well, I need to take down your destination once you get to Ben Gurion. Okay. Where is it? Jerusalem. You need to go to Jerusalem. How much did you make out of us? 770. 770? Not yeah. bad deal for five hours work, is it? No, no work. Five hours, no work. <laughs> it's you a hassle with the like kids. It's all right. It's all right. In Terminal 3, it's a waiting game. The results of the tests on the suitcase are expected at any moment. The suitcase has been given the all clear. Check-in can return to normal, but the whereabouts of the owner is still a mystery. He's disappeared. I mean, he just—he missed his flight yesterday, and that's it. There've been no more reservations or anything. Here you are, sir. As promised, your boarding cards. Have a pleasant flight and hug some air. I appreciate it. Pleasure's ours. It's a total chaos. Thank you very much indeed. And hug some air to you all. Thank you. It should all be well. Thank you so Thank much. You too, Thank you. Bye bye now. Sarah and Peter have won their numbers game. There's boarding cards for all the remaining passengers. But some people have been waiting so long, they're no longer concentrating. Is there anybody know Cohen and Nassi? What's your name, madam? Sofieski. No, no, Cohen no, no, and Nassi. Nassi. Yeah, everybody you call on. Passenger Carlson? Yes. Yeah. OK, you get your seat in exactly two seconds. No one will be left behind, even though there's a few more handouts to make. We give you fifty dollars voucher to spend on board the aircraft. I'm closing the flight. Yeah. Fantastic. I can almost kiss him. I'm not go going on, go to. On, go on, go on. Just in case my just husband sees that. Just for No, you can kiss me. Nasir will have to spend the night in the Heathrow detention centre until final checks are made on the dates in his passport with the New Zealand High Commission. Holding. I can say it's a bad luck, <laughs> nothing else, because ultimately everything will be okay. Tomorrow they'll come to know it's 6th October 97, so they'll be okay. But it's bad luck, I have to suffer till tomorrow, I'll suffer, <laughs> I can't help it. The next day, the New Zealand High Commission confirmed the date in the passport was correct. Although the passport had been tampered with, there was no evidence that Nasir was involved, and he was allowed to enter Britain for his two-week business trip. The unattended suitcase ended up at lost property, only to be reunited with its owner three weeks later. This very often you can go home after a day's work and you've just got no explanation whatsoever for the strange things that happen during the day. <laughs> All the passengers on El Al made it to Israel in time for Passover. Russell's picture was syndicated around the world, and the Playboy boss is still keeping up with his new girlfriends. You're watching Dave. Next, the dragons decide whether they are in or out in Dragon's Den.